Every year, millions of visitors from all around the world come to Savannah, Georgia. They stroll the city's historic squares, enjoying the generous tree canopy draped with Spanish moss, and soak up the architectural ambiance of hundreds of beautifully restored historic buildings. But Savannah hasn't always been the polished jewel tourists see today. In the 1950s, when I was growing up, downtown Savannah was fascinating, but it was seedy. People come to Savannah, the visitors come, and I think we've always looked this way, we've always looked this good. And in the 60s, the buildings were just run down, they weren't painted, they were broken window panes. I mean, it was um, totally different. Savannah's historic downtown core came under tremendous pressure in the years immediately after World War II. It had become very profitable for developers to bulldoze old buildings, put parking lots in their place, and sell the bricks to be used in new suburban homes. To make matters worse, city leaders saw no value in historic buildings and instead sought to make Savannah look like other new South cities with shopping centers and new bank buildings rising from the rubble of the past. The business community felt that uh, tearing things down and putting parking, parking would be the answer to downtown. People would come back. I went through a panic when I sudden, when, when the people, the business community was saying, let's look like Jacksonville, a modern progressive city. Let's get rid of all these buildings. I thought, oh help, we got to do something. The loss of those things, one by one, um, represented a loss of community and sense of place that Savannah had. It, it, we were trading in our uniqueness for um, everywhere USA, one building at a time. There were isolated efforts over the years to save Savannah's historic buildings. Early leaders included people like Walter C. Hartridge, a Savannah native and president of the Georgia Historical Society. He was one of the only voices in the wilderness at that time. He loved every stone and brick and cobblestone and everything about this city, and he knew it all wonderfully well. He did not want anything to be torn down. Two other early visionaries, Savannah Gas Company President Hansel Hillier and his wife Mary, began restoration of the historic Trustees Garden area on the northeast corner of downtown Savannah, dismantling the old gas tanks and restoring historic buildings on the property. Various groups helped save other Savannah architectural treasures, such as the Gothic Revival Green Meldrum Mansion, the Juliet Gordon Low Place, the Andrew Low House, and the Owens Thomas Mansion. But as significant as these homes were, their salvation could not reverse the tide of neglect that was washing over historic Savannah, Georgia. The straw that broke the camel's back was the destruction of this building, the Old City Market, which had stood in Ellis Square since the late 1800s. City officials allowed the market to be torn down in 1954 to build a parking garage. Preservation-minded Savannians vowed that nothing like this would ever happen again if they could help stop it. The inevitable showdown came the next year when a downtown funeral parlor announced plans to purchase the circa 1820 Isaiah Davenport House on Columbia Square, with the presumed intention of demolishing it. Local newspaper writer and artist Anna Colquitt Hunter gathered six friends and formed a new nonprofit organization, Historic Savannah Foundation, to make sure this architectural treasure was not lost. The real motion behind all of this was Anna Colquitt Hunter. She was the center. She needed others, but she was the committed one. She rallied many other important Savannians to have a concerted face. Hunter and her compatriots were able to raise the money needed to purchase the mansion. Today, the Isaiah Davenport House operates as a house museum, playing host to 35,000 visitors each year and spreading the message of what Historic Savannah Foundation is all about. We hope that people will come out knowing what Historic Savannah Foundation is, how, who founded it, our seven ladies, but also understand um, what quality craftsmanship meant in the 1820s. The Davenport House received national attention in 2005 when the museum was honored with a Preserve America Presidential Award for Private Preservation. President George W. Bush personally presented the award in the Oval Office.
Saving the Davenport House in 1955 was a significant success, but HSF had aspirations that went beyond saving one historic structure. They wanted to create a mechanism for saving as many as possible. Well, their vision was to bring organization to the whole fight of saving these endangered historic buildings. Um, so rather than putting out fires one at a time and always being in some form of panic or, or you know, some state of panic or, or emergency, if we bring some organization to this, literally and figuratively, um, then we can get ahead of the curve and we can start anticipating issues and being proactive rather than simply reactive. Historic Savannah Foundation went on the offensive, creating a revolving fund so that they would always have cash on hand to purchase threatened historic buildings whenever the need arose. Rescued buildings were restored and put back on the market, sold to new owners who saw the value of living or working in a historic place. The idea being, we'll make an investment, then sell it, take the proceeds of that original investment, plow it back into the fund and move on to the next building. So the money revolves, the work revolves, um, and that little by little, we make an impact around the city. To date, more than 350 historic homes have been saved by the revolving fund Historic Savannah Foundation started five decades ago. But the real key to turning Savannah around was the potential for tourist dollars. Historic Savannah Foundation brought a nationally known heritage tourism expert to town, and his assessment caused city leaders to see the light. When Savannah, a gold mine for the tourist industry, came across on the paper and headlines, then the business community thought, aha, money can be made from saving buildings. So that turned things around. In historic Savannah was one of the first to tell city government, we have a jewel here that we can make money off of. Work with us. Historic Savannah Foundation even helped create the city's first tourist guidebook, Sojourn in Savannah. But soon HSF's attention was turned to another emerging crisis. Armstrong Junior College, which was then headquartered in this mansion at Bull and Gaston Streets downtown, announced plans in the early 1960s to expand its campus and knock down these historic homes in the process. The proposal would virtually obliterate all the historic structures from Forsyth Park to Liberty Street. Retired banker Mills B. Lane Jr. stepped in, donating 250 acres of land on Savannah's undeveloped south side for a new campus. Historic Savannah Foundation then purchased all of Armstrong's six downtown buildings and sold them to new owners. Disaster was averted. In addition to this major victory, Lane deserves credit for the gold leaf on City Hall's dome. Mr. Lane looked at the bigger picture, and the city allowed him to spend his money in any way that he would see fit to do so. Lane's son, Mills B. Lane IV, continued his father's legacy by completing restoration work on the William Scarborough Mansion on West Broad Street. He directed its conversion into the Ships of the Sea Maritime Museum, which houses his father's model ship collection. Mills B. Lane IV is also responsible for the modern-day appearance of Bull Street, home to Savannah's most significant monuments and squares. That was one of his big projects, was the Bull Street project. He wanted, that's what he wanted to be the template. Um, they put all the wiring underneath the ground, they tore up the concrete sidewalks and put in brick sidewalks, planted appropriate trees in the tree lawn, they put um, the bishop's crook lamps in, and the cast iron trash cans. In the 1960s, Savannian Lee Adler, the son of one of the seven founders, rose to prominence with an appointment to be a trustee of the National Trust for Historic Preservation. Adler brought the National Organization's 1968 meeting to Savannah, and with it, 900 influential preservationists. Oh, it was a great, huge success story. I mean, we knew, we, we were in the national limelight, setting the pace for historic preservation in the country. Historic Savannah Foundation made sure the attendees experienced everything Savannah had to offer, including a massive picnic in beautiful Forsyth Park. To be sure, there were some losses during these heady days. 
the historic Union Station on West Broad Street, a turn-of-the-century Spanish Renaissance structure, was demolished in 1963 to make way for an interstate flyover. And three years later, developers destroyed the original 1888 DeSoto Hotel on Madison Square. Still, preservation was starting to catch on, and the tide had begun to turn. In 1966, the U.S. Department of the Interior designated downtown Savannah as a National Historic Landmark District. Historic Savannah Foundation published its inventory of all 1,100 architecturally significant structures within that district two years later in 1968. And the fact that this was a professionally done inventory had some meaning and carried some weight. So it made a great difference to have the general public know the value of the buildings. In 1973, the city of Savannah passed a historic district ordinance, which created a review process governing new construction as well as changes to existing structures within the district. It also created a historic district board of review to oversee that process. What it means today is when we have a vacant site, for a new building, what matters most is that that building respects the town plan first in its scale, its massing, its relationship to the street, its height. The next big chapter in Savannah's preservation story opened with the creation of the Savannah College of Art and Design, or SCAD for short, in 1979 with seven professors and 71 students. In the years since its founding, this startup college has grown to become one of the world's leading colleges of art and design. SCAD's first building was the former Savannah Volunteer Guards Armory, a notable Romanesque revival structure built in 1892. Fortunately for the Savannah preservation movement, SCAD has continued its original practice of purchasing and rehabilitating threatened historical buildings for classroom use. To date, the college has saved more than 50 structures throughout downtown Savannah and surrounding neighborhoods. Savannah is filled with remarkable buildings that are, uh, as a community, tell us so much about ourselves, our history, um, who we are, our aspirations. It's an honor to be able to teach in buildings of such extraordinary uh, quality. Maybe most important, it's a place where I think we have the ability to instill an ethic, uh, to, in a way, pass the baton to the next generation. SCAD's historic preservation students are visible throughout Savannah as they hone their skills working in historic structures that serve as hands-on preservation laboratories. They're developing that passion. They're the next generation that has to go forward to keep the preservation movement going. Older generations have done their share, but these folks are the, are the new evangelists, if you will, of historic preservation. And I would say that the students who are in our department are really evangelistic about the whole movement. Preservation is catching on as entrepreneurs put the craft to work rehabilitating more and more historic homes throughout Savannah. Uh, there's an intrinsic value in the historic house that, that people really want uh, to have in their lives and that's that, that depth of history and that sense of, of place, that sense of, of it having been there a long, long time and having longevity. These buildings are better built, they're better designed, they have better materials, but these buildings also have proven themselves by standing through hurricanes, through storms, through floods. They've proven to be valuable assets that grow in their value, and bankers and investors are starting to recognize that. And it all began with Historic Savannah Foundation, seven women who had the courage to stop the demolition of one historic home and start a movement that went on to save a city. I think we have a tremendous debt to the early preservationists in Savannah. Without rescuing the city from imminent demise, we wouldn't have this living laboratory today, this living example of a city that provides a key to what the future can look like. Savannah enjoys an international rep reputation today, and visitors come from all over the world. Had those seven ladies not been so tenacious, no one would come to Savannah. So the, we owe what Savannah is today to those ladies. We have a sense of place here, um, and it's a place that matters. And we can't, we can't lose that, because if we do, then we lose our identity as a community. Um, 
and then we just become another soulless city. Now it's up to all of us to honor their vision and make sure a sense of balance between history, tourism, and day-to-day -day life is maintained in beautiful, historic Savannah, Georgia.